Hello and how are you? My name is Mahind Dumbak and I will come here to our 27th, if not 28th uh, lecture of creating uh, a complete inventory management system. As you know, we always do 40 minutes, so I'll start our timer. All right, we're going to resume from where we stopped at in the previous lecture. If you still remember in the previous lecture, uh, we were able to create uh, the response uh, model that we're going to be handling, that will be handling for us the responses. Uh, so we're going to take it from there and we we'll see how we can uh, proceed. All right, so let me go to our file, which is the create financial record we are here so we're going to create now we have finished uh, creating this response model where i can give it a json you can give it a string and then it will hand optimize it it will handle it and just give us a what and just give us a, a response that is in the format that we exactly want okay so that is either that is in the format of code string and i mean message and the data itself all right so with that much said now let us work on the http so we're going to begin by creating a function for http post okay so we're going to begin by creating a function for http post so let me come here to our what to our to our create financial period screen so we have here uh we have here where we are posting the information okay so and uh so we are able to get the response and then we could put the response in the what in the console so what you're going to do you're going to also uh, design these lines or this uh this this thing in uh in a single file i mean in a single um in a single thing in a single function in a way that we shall be calling it and then it gives us the what the response so let's uh for example go ahead here and test so let's go ahead and and see what we can get right now and then we take it from there so if i come here and i come and put financial period let me say this one and then i just say it is beginning from here up to here and i save and then i say it is active and then i come and put here some information and then i submit so you see it is it is okay we we had stopped at that point where we could submit let me go to the submit button here so here we know we remember we were testing this eh? so now i can remove them so you can do the actual uh submission okay so here when you submit it's going to come here and open this log i mean and show this dialog i mean and show this loader and then after we send the information to this and then we give it a json the data will give it a json and then we give these options and then here we get what comes back and then put in the console we hide the load and could put in the console so if i try to say now and i say yes so it's it is loading and then in the console you can see it is success but the error message is here code and the message is on is not it's authenticated it's unauthenticated, uh, unauthenticated and the data is now so we're going to see how we create a function that can do all these things for us okay so let's go ahead and uh, just cut this so we're going to create the http functions okay so let me come and cut all this the way it is here so we're going to create um function in the utils so i'll come to our utils class so i'm going to create uh, here a function that i'm going to call http post the one that will be working on the sending of the post methods okay so okay so i can call it utils i mean sorry i can call it uh static uh, h i mean static dynamic dynamic and then you can call it http uh post okay just okay so it will be receiving the url and the map okay the, the the data to send okay uh, the two things will be receiving the, the url and the data to send so i'm going to cut this and then i put our logic okay our logic here so it will go ahead and uh, we import the deal and then after we come and initialize the deal so here the url or maybe we can call it maybe this an endpoint endpoint 
we're going to put it here okay so since all, not all input will have the word api so let me put this one here let me just duplicate this and i put um like this okay so now on the one shall call we shall just pass that api there all right so let me just put this one here for now okay so we will pass here the endpoint so it is going to be the link that is going to this endpoint so it is attaching our base url and then the endpoint that will have been sent okay and then have here on the data we just put the data here that is coming okay like this like this you see we get it like that and then in case of an error so in case of an error we can just return uh, maybe null something like that okay we can just return null so in case of uh, of success we can return uh the response that has come okay we can return the response has come like this so that is a simple http post okay so a simple http post so you can see it here you can pause the video and look at it it's just uh, that's it it gets an endpoint and then the the data that we're going to send and then it is asynchronous so sorry here it has to be future uh future dynamic okay so that it can be awaited eh? so like this okay yeah so it tries to send if it fails to reset this one to null and then send back whatever has come back all right so let's go ahead and call it this site so i'll come back to create here and then for example i can say maybe our response okay let me just say here dynamic dynamic response equals to equals to await util.http post and i pass the what the api stroke financial period and then i pass the what the widgets to json okay so i pass the data so you can see this one now how you, uh, like how it is now simple to make a http request okay it's just http request and then util.http post and then i do the same thing so you see how it is now very simple so now if i come here and uh, let's see if we shall get the same results so let's go ahead and open our console and we try to submit we'll see we are getting exactly the same result without any what without any error so that is very nice so you can go ahead and open this http post and you look at it how i've designed it let me just come through it let me explain it again for the one more time so it is receiving an endpoint it is a future static Found that it is going to return dynamic variable so receive an endpoint and it receives a, a, a map of a string and dynamic so this is the data that's going to send the internet and then after it goes and create the deal and then we say the response and then we do the normal http post that we do whereby we are just putting our base url here and we put the endpoint that the person has sent when who is calling this function and then after we you see if it is if it fails we just make this one null and then return back so maybe if it fails here we can get the reason uh for example i can say maybe string and say error equals to e dot to string okay so i get this one and i put it to error or you can just simply put here dot dot Yeah, there is an article deal error yeah something like that the deal error yeah i think huh? there's a how i can surround this one in the deal error let me try to see here in some function that Means some project that I've done before. Let's try and catch. Yeah, this is what I was looking for. Yeah, so catch it like this. On deal exception, then you catch it like this. Okay, so um we can just get our response so for us we can uh, maybe try to make this one to be uh okay 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 so uh yep okay uh, 
Alright, so that is okay. So I'm going to explain something here. So that is uh, fine. Uh -huh. So if there is an error, we can make sure we can try to make sure that it returns something that has a little bit sense. So since we already know our our response to expecting the code, the data, and the and the it expect the code, the data, and the message. So I can just simply return here a what a json uh, of course it has uh, code which is zero okay and then it's going to have the message and then we get the error message there and then the data we make it null so this one would make make much more sense uh, to someone who have called it okay compared compared to returning null without giving a reason why it did not succeed okay so like this i think this is enough okay this is okay so you can look at that function and understand it uh, now let's come back now to our HTTP post. So if in case everything goes right, right, it will be able to work like this. Now, uh, now um, let's now make sure you see now here we are again trying to check if it is not null, all those stuff. Okay. So what if we just uh, make this use of our what our response model? So I can say maybe response model. Maybe say maybe response data here. Okay, so a response model, you can be simply say response model and say response model equals to response model and then we pass the what? The data, okay? So you know this one is going to process the data that will have come from this side. So here we don't need again to check if it is null or what, we don't need to do that, okay? We can just simply say, uh, we can just simply display what has come, okay? So you can say print and I put here maybe code, so you see I'll be able to access it through it this object of code i go ahead and put here a message okay and then in case there is data i can go ahead and put there the data okay so you see how things are becoming much more simple let me remove this see how things are becoming much more simple let me save you see we are breaking now the lines so if i try to submit Now you see, I have here the code, the message, and the error. So, like, there is no any now uh, checking if there's something is null or what and what. There's nothing more like that. Okay, it just makes life simple. So, you see, it is just there are now two lines. You just write this line and then this line. You can go ahead and make it much more interesting. So, instead of creating this variable, you can just remove this variable. Then you get this function for sending just this function for sending http request now you come and remove it remove this variable and then replace it here so in this response model we just pass await and then you say util.http post and then you pass the function and then you pass the data and then whatever will come will be uh, organized and then be put here so you see within one line so one line is now working as the whole 20 lines that we are writing so here you have the request end this is just my own thing and then here i'll just display the data so let's try to send again you see code zero message so message do not display uh message 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 is supposed to be unauthenticated okay Okay, so let's see how we fix that. Of course, we're still fixing. Okay, let's see how we fix that. Let's put it in our normal response model. Okay, let's see how what is coming to the other side. So let me remove this one for now. So, okay, let me just remove this. Let's comment it, okay. But let's make sure that we hide the loader. Now let's go to our response model. Press Ctrl and click on it, and then let's see what we're getting here. Okay, and put here, and see what is coming in the raw data.
All right, let's see what is coming in the raw data. Submit. So it is response of dynamic, okay? It is uh, response dynamic. Huh? So that is the run type, okay? But uh, let's see. So response dynamic. That is the run type that is coming. Let's try to dump whatever has come. Okay. Okay, see? So let's try to here in a utils when you're returning. Let's say if is not equal to null, return response.data. This is what we want to return. Okay, if it's not equal to null, if it's equal to null, we return uh, failed to connect the server. And then if it is if it is not equal to null, let's go ahead and return response.data like this. Okay. This is what you should return. Else, this return also something that is making sense. All right, I think this one is now better. Okay, so this is our HTTP post. It checks. If this thing is null, if this thing is null, okay, so it checks if thing is, is not null, it checks if the data is not null. So this response comes with data, it comes with data. So you just check the data. If, if it is not null, if it's equal to null, we return, we return just something that has uh, some sense, eh? Fail to connect to server, okay? Or maybe you can say maybe server. returned empty response okay so we can maybe even try and and put here the status code okay and then put comma and then you put maybe uh, response dot to string because not null already so something like that so you can give a complete context okay so that is when it is not equal to null if the data so response dot data is where the data is okay response dot data so if response dot data is not, it's not null we shall go ahead and return now the response dot what dot data else if response is the the response itself is null we go ahead and return the what and say maybe uh, response is null response is null something like this but you may not need to show this one to users eh? <laughs> Just using this one for development so you can understand so i think this one is much making much more sense we are here returning the data so let's go ahead and try to to see now i hope you've understood <gasps> i hope you've understood this okay so we're just returning here response to data that's the most important part you should understand if it is not none so let's go ahead and try to run again so you can see that uh sorry Let's go ahead and see. Submit. It's running now. Okay. Let's see what we are having here. In this, so having exactly this, yeah. So, think everything is fine here. So, let me just remove this. Let's remove this. I think now everything is fine, okay? So, let's come here to our financial period create and then we uncomment what I had commented. And we see if this one is now working as it was, it's expected. Okay, so um, 
submit you see the message is coming unauthenticated so everything is now fine so we had to return response.data okay now so you see now how things are much more simple you just run one line and then you have uh, what you have the whole thing uh, being solved okay so in the rest of things we shall just be writing this line and then we shall be able to send a word post all right so that you can use that one even in your different kind of projects okay so that will have become like a tool uh, to simplify your work okay so right now now let's go ahead and proceed to what and proceed to let's go ahead and proceed now to the solving now the problem of this uh what of this uh, this thing that is coming unauthenticated okay unauthenticated so let's so you see here unauthenticated so let's see what we, what we authentic how we could how we are setting an authentic i mean authentication so if you come here to our inverter track so if you come here to our api our api so let's come here for example to api of this for example we have this update okay let's see how we are determining someone to be not authenticated so i say here get user so here in get user utils uh we are sending uh so they want us to send logged in user id okay so they want us to send logged in user id in order for us to be authenticated all right so it means that every time we make a request you have to send a logged in user id you get it so what does it mean it means that you're going to get uh to get the logged in user and then attach it in the data that we are sending to online so let's go ahead and do that so we shall come here to http post uh now we already know we already have the function that gets a logged in user i think we already have it so here on top of http post we're going to come here and put uh logged in user and say maybe logged in user equals to logged in dot get user you remember this function eh? so i've already created this function i hope you if you watch the previous video it works on the whole logic of get the logged in user so we have that is very beautiful so i can be able to get here the link the id of logged in user let's try and put here the id of logged in user okay okay so see so if you try and submit you see our logged in user id is number 20 so it is working perfectly okay so instead of us re repeating ourselves we're just going to be calling this and get the logged in user id and then we attach it there so uh let's come back to our back end so they want us to be sending logged in user id so we have to add that one in the data that we are sending okay so let's see in the headers they want us to send it in the header okay in the header so let's add it in the header let's add it in the header where is the project I have so many things open there. let's add it in the header here so we shall come here and put that in the header in the header for security purposes we send logged in user id which is equal to user that id and then make it to string so at this point if you didn't get now unauthenticated okay so if you want maybe for example here i see we are also in this api we're also sending company id almost everywhere so let's also be sending company id since we already have it on every user so we can send it here in the header company id and then put here company id i believe it's already there okay and then you can also maybe put it in the data right in the data so you can put there company id i hope it is not going to crash things but we shall see company id we always add it in the data like this you can even maybe add the logged news id in the data as well if you don't want if you want to be safe 100 percent let the string but you shall see if it disturbs things we shall remove them okay so we, every every request that we are sending in the headers we are sending the company id and the a uh, user id the logged in user id likewise in the data itself we are sending the company id the logged in user id so i believe now we shall not have that error of what of what authenticated so let's go ahead and submit 
You see? Uh, the error is still there. Unauthenticated. Why? Why, 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 why? Unauthenticated. Okay. Let's see what we could have gone wrong. See here, I have the header. So you find the user. So if the user is null, you just authenticate it. So I'm not telling whether something that maybe user was not found or anything like that. All right, let's try to send the user ID of a person who is, who is there, so that we are sure the person is there. ID one. And you see. Try to submit. Unauthentic unauthenticated. Okay. So it's not having some issues, maybe the server. Let's first see what we are sending. Let me put in the console. What you're sending, let me put in the head. What I'm sending in the head, let me put in the console and you see. Submit. You see. Logged in the ID is there. Company ID is there. Okay, so let's try to use now the postman and see what could be causing this. So you come here to postman. Inverter track online. Let's go. Let's switch that on of online. So that's our online version. Let me try to send. Create financial period. Try to send. Unauthenticated. Okay. So let's try to uh, to send a heart. To send um, in the headers. Let's try to send ID one unauthenticated. So I believe my my what my I believe my my hosting is not working the headers properly. So what am I going to do there? I'm going to use the let's see how many times I'm getting this header. Let me use the I'm just use get and I get that ID whether it's in the header or what. So let's try to put get and see. So let's publish and you see. So I push now I come to my hosting Come to GitHub project. Inventor tracker. This one's at inventor track. The TG. Inventor track. The TG. I think it's this one. So I come here to pull. Pull my changes. It has deployed the changes, okay? So let's try to send again. So let's send this one in the post, I mean the body. So you see, 
So it is working. So you have to say now in the using the body, the header is not detecting it. I think because I'm using underscores. Okay. If you don't use underscore, it has to work. The server may behave differently. But you've seen how I've solved that. Eh? So let us be sending using the what? Using the body. So we have already put it in the body. Yeah, for those who should have the server working on using the header, that's good. If you want the body, so you can also as well put in the body instead. Okay. So let me go ahead and send now. So I should get, you see, success. You see there is success here. Though cannot be null. There is an error, but uh, they're saying what? Cannot be null. Column eh? integrity constraint cannot be null. Okay. So total investment cannot be null. Okay. So we're going to fix all that. Okay. Now, but you can see the whole point is we are able to send something online and we get the response. So yeah so we shall need to leave those on there let me remove this printing okay okay so you see everything is fine now so you can pause that that the, the video and look at how i've written my function of post okay and then on the server i've just changed this one from the header and put it back sorry i've changed this one from the header and i put it back in the in the what in the form that will be will be uploaded Okay, so now let's go ahead and see how we can now uh, be able to, to display now the errors. But you can see now, we're at this point now. So I'm just going to come here, remove this. I'm going to show how it, is, how it has become simple. So I have to make sure that I hide. Okay, I hide when things are not right. When it, when it is done like this. So you can see now how everything is now very simple. After validation, I just write one line for sending, and that's it. So I'll just simply come here and check. Come here and check if dot code is not one. If dot code is not what? Dot code is not what? Is not one. I get the error message and I send it here. Okay. So I can just even do some. Toast, eh? okay so i say error like that so if it is one if it is one then i can put here maybe uh success or some toast of success okay so financial credit credit success like i can even go to display the message so you see here when it is not one i get the error here the other variable and i make it to be the message here and i then so it can be displayed okay so if it is not one if it is one the code is not is one ah i proceed so you see now how it has become very simple to make a http request so let's go ahead and submit see that's the error and then it is here that is well explained integrity constraint column total investment cannot be null or that blah, blah, blah. so it means that when you're sending when you're sending um when we are sending, we have to make sure that these things at least have some values. Eh? So let's go ahead and see. This is our, our what a financial period. Let's go ahead and copy everything and see what is not doesn't have value and put their value. Okay, so we are here. We are here, we are here, we are here, we are here, we are here. Okay, so here before we convert it to JSON, let's go ahead and check. Let's go ahead and check each of them. So I'm going to say if widget dot item dot what the total expense the total expense dot that is empty if it's empty we initialize it to zero okay we initialize it to zero okay so we do the same also for the what for the profit okay we do the same for the profit okay so if also profit is empty we also initialize it to zero okay so you do the same for the what for the cells also if you like it to zero if it is empty we do the same for the what for the um, total investment if you like it to zero and then the description the description of course there is, it is already there uh the status is already there the date is already there i think the rest are, the, are okay 
okay so company id you can company ID is already being submitted from the other side every time you send a request the company id will be submitted automatically okay so i think that is okay now let's wait submit again and see submit yes you see success financial period created successfully that is beautiful okay that is so 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 beautiful okay so if you try to send back you'll see that uh, there's already a, an active financial period okay so first deactivate it so that is so 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 good that is very nice like it is nice in a way that we can just simply make this kind of uh, a simple request and we're able to get this so let's go ahead and uh, and, and and retrieve back the what let's go ahead and retrieve the now let's go ahead and retrieve what the records that are on internet okay let's go ahead and retrieve the records that are on internet okay then after you go ahead and uh, do the edit and the delete okay so let's go ahead and do the record and retrieve the record that you are on internet so let me come here so you see okay so i can say maybe unsuccessful unsuccessful you can just go back okay so let's go back here and just do the records of collecting data from internet okay so now uh let's go back to financial period list financial periods list let me come back here okay financial periods here this is where we are okay so we're going to do now the logic of getting the data from internet and display it on the local machine okay so let's go ahead and do that um so we're going to create a method that is going to be responsible for getting the data on from internet however i would like to to show you one more thing before we even proceed which is uh we're going to put here in the post okay so sometimes the internet the phone is not connected to internet okay sometimes the phone is not connected to internet so it is good if you can first check if the phone is not connected to internet you just stop to avoid the uh, waiting but for example some people will not have internet and they try to submit so the phone will first wait okay will first wait and uh, and to waste time okay so how about like if the phone is off we just don't even bother to go to internet we just re re send back the response okay so let's go ahead and do that function so there is uh, a package that we're going to add this is called flutter internet connection checker it is working on all the platforms okay so uh, we're going to add this one it helps us to check if someone is connected to internet or not so you should not waste time in waiting or in loading and getting unnecessary errors so if someone is not connected we just send back the response so let's go ahead and add that package so here it is flutter i mean internet connection checker so let's go ahead and and add it so run this function of flutter come here to terminal and then i run it so there we are so it has been installed okay so after doing that the next thing so it has been added so the next thing is now to <laughs> To check if the phone is not connected to internet it is very simple you see just say await dot has connection that's it that's it it is as simple as that so i can just simply create my function here ah, where are we sorry 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 where are we here sorry i'm sorry for opening many things eh? so i've added the package so i can I can call, I can create here my function. Uh, I'm going to call it is connected. Okay, so it's going to be returning a bool, and it's going to be static. So it's just going to be return like this. Okay, so it have to be asynchronous. So I import this, and then yeah, so. Me, I'll just be calling is connected so it will check if internet connect has connection and it turn true or false something like that okay so here i'm going to before i make any re request you see
before I make any request, I'm going to just first check if I'm going to first check if if what if it's not connected, I just if is not await connected, I put this one in the bracket. I just go ahead and return code is zero, message is no internet connection, and the data is none. So like that one, uh, we shall have optimized the uh, the the thing. If someone is in offline mode and they they want to use the application, so we don't bother to keep on going on internet. See if someone does not have data switched on. Okay, so that is very powerful technique. So I've added that one also in our hard in our post method. Okay, so all right, so that's it for today. Now in the next lecture, I hope you've uh, seen, I hope you've understood, I hope you're going to practice to make sure that you get every point here. So in the next lecture, now we're going to work on the logic of uh, fetching the data from internet, saving it offline, and then display it. Okay, then if time will allow, now we shall we shall go ahead and work on the generation like being able to generate the code okay being able to generate the code itself so we don't keep on repeating ourselves and that's also another powerful technique so that's it for today make sure that you subscribe you subscribe to our youtube channel and make sure that you don't give up keep practicing until you finish all this once you practice this like three times or four times you'll see that everything is now making sense and every you're now to, able to understand something you can make your own application where you can send the data to internet and and that's the whole beauty and people can be able to communicate or the phones can be able to communicate with one another using your mobile application let's say that you have you want to make an application where someone can order for food so you'll be able to do something like this and it is very very powerful technique all right that's it for today uh, i wish you a good day and let us meet in the next video Where we're going to look at that listing.